Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Love and Light Show, where your special guest is Stephanie, and we're talking about stepping into your power. I'm so excited for this episode, and thank you so much for joining us. Stephanie, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me here. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. So we're going to be talking about shadow work today, how you can do it while channeling joy so that it's not this like scary thing that you always want to like push off and never actually do. And also what that deeper awareness in your life can actually bring you all these positive benefits that it will support you with. And definitely stay tuned to the end where we're going to do a visualization where you can step into your higher self now and feel what that feels like. So definitely say hi to us as you're tuning in live. We have some people joining us live and we can't see you on the Be Live platform. So definitely say hi to us as you're popping on live or if you're catching the replay. We'd love to engage with you guys after the show. And I'm Laura McPhee. I'm a joyful goddess, a speaker, healer, and coach. And I love empowering women through self-love, self-care, sexual empowerment, and releasing and letting go of the limiting beliefs that tell them that they're not good enough or pretty enough or smart enough or whatever enough so that they can be living their dream lives now. And I'm super excited that one of the offerings I'm doing this month is a heart and soul sexual healing so that they can release and let go of any of the suffering or misalignments in their energy that are preventing them from having the pleasure that they're desiring. So I'm doing that as a co-creation with the beautiful Christine Cliff. And we're going to do one locally because I know that some people were like, that big three month from Broken to Blissful program sounds interesting, but like that's a huge deep dive and I'm not sure if I'm ready for that yet. So it'll be a beautiful two hour sacred sacred sisterhood experience that you can have it locally. It's also gonna be online for my online loves. So you guys have these different little sneak peeks of like how you guys can do that first layer of healing and start moving you forward on your path. So I'm so excited to do that. And this is the Love and Light Show where every Wednesday and Friday we bring you different light workers and healers and heart-centered entrepreneurs so you guys can have the support that you need on your journey. You guys can get different tips and tricks and healing modalities so that you can be that change that you want to see in the world first and foremost for yourself and then spread that love and light to other people in your world. And we really encourage you to share the show, especially because when I did the Pussy Centered Living episode on Monday, I got in trouble for sharing it. And I shared the Love and Light show for over a year and a half, the exact same groups every single time. But apparently Facebook does not like women learning about pussy centered living or yoni centered living or vagina centered living, whatever verbiage you want to have that better. And if you don't like the verbiage pussy, I really, really, really recommend reading the book, Pussy Reclamation by Mama Gina. So empowering, so enlightening, and it's so important for women to take back our power. And I love this episode. It's about stepping into your power. So I'm currently in like Facebook jail. I'm very restricted. And then I like did something else. And apparently, like just being in my one funnel away group trying to comment on the daily challenge got me in trouble again. So I'm in <laughs> Facebook jail for another 24 hours. It's like apparently, like their restrictions are a real thing. Like, don't even try to like use any kind of group during the restriction otherwise say bump out your restriction <laughs> so yeah if you guys could support us in sharing out this love and light show i would really appreciate that because i'm going to be restricted for a while <laughs> so yeah i encourage you guys to share it if you feel like you need help in your life for stepping into your power and you want to support other beautiful souls in their lives and stepping into their power and holly's joining us live hello holly hope you're having a wonderful day and Stephanie is a transformational coach and speaker who helps women step into their power. So I'm super excited for this episode. Yay. <laughs> I am too. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. And I love everything that you're about. And it yeah. just feels so good. <laughs> yes, I love it. So let's jump right in. And how do you help people with their shadow work? So shadow work, like you mentioned sort of earlier on, sounds like it's something really scary. You mm -hmm. know, we hear shadow and we're like, ooh, I don't want to touch that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I, you know, I totally get it because when I was first also diving in on my own journey, I heard that term and I was like, I think I want to stay over here where, yeah. you know, love, love and light life. sounds really great. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then, you know, what I came to realize is that, you know, the love and light is so important, obviously channeling that goodness, wanting to feel those good mm -hmm. things. But at the same time, you can never truly achieve healing unless you allow yourself to get to know all aspects of yourself, the light and the shadow. And that meeting point in the middle there is where that true, true healing actually happens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, explaining it that way and, you know, thinking about it as it's just getting to know all pieces of you. Mm -hmm. everything about yourself. And, you know, so one of the things that um, I start shadow work generally kind of like right in the beginning, even with my group programs and everything, because it's mm -hmm. like, right, we're just going to dive right in. And, you know, it doesn't have to be scary because mm -hmm. it's you. Yeah. And um, I'm really big on journal prompts. Um, mm -hmm. So when, 
you know, sort of like after our sessions or the group calls or wherever the platform is that we're working together. Um, I love giving journaling exercises because when you allow yourself to just sort of free flow answer a question, you'd be really surprised as to what comes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my favorite ones that I give out is um, how or like, so sometimes it's a question, sometimes it's like a, a leading thing depending on how it comes through. But mm -hmm. what am I afraid of other people knowing about me? Mm. And that's like my favorite place to start because um, that that fear place there where it's, it's like, you know, we're hiding something that's breeding mm -hmm. guilt and shame and yeah. guilt and shame, um, self-judgment, all of those things are what's really holding you back from stepping into your power, which is so what yeah. we're talking about right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so starting to just identify those things is really, you, you can't change anything unless you have an awareness around what's even in there, you know, what's even mm -hmm. happening. And so just getting that knowledge is really the first, the first step there mm -hmm. for me anyway. <laughs> And there used to be so many things that I thought were bad or wrong or shameful. And like, I get mad, I get angry, but I wouldn't ever yell. I wouldn't ever express that because good girls don't do that. So I remember in a healing session when I was kind of expressing how I was actually feeling about a situation and being encouraged to do that by the healer I was working with. She's like, it's okay for you to feel that. Like a lot of women feel really pissed off and angry when these kinds of things happen. We just don't express it because we're not supposed to in society. Yes. But it's really unhealthy and it's only going to cause you disease later in life if you keep that bottled in and shut down. And you don't, uh, you don't bring that awareness to your shadow and to the really horrible thoughts that you think that you're having that you're judging yourself for that every single person has. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's the mm -hmm. thing is we put ourselves on these islands, right? Of like, mm, mm -hmm. no, it's just me. I'm the only one feeling this way. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that's ever had this thought, you know, X, Y, or Z, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> sorry. Um, and that's where that shame can really start to hold us down. And like, think about a time where you actually voiced something that you were feeling or something that you were having a lot of anxiety about, or a lot of shame about how good did you feel after you let that out? Yes. So good. And that's the feeling that, you know, we, we all want to feel all the time because anxiety sucks. Mm. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> And, you know, how often has something that you're hiding woken you up at three o'clock in the morning in a panic attack or, you know, kept you feeling at your best? And anxiety is one of my like passions to work with, too. So that's going to come up throughout mm -hmm. because, you know, hiding from our shadow work often breeds anxiety for people without even knowing that it's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, so and I totally agree with you. I was actually just speaking at an event out in Portland, Oregon this weekend. Um, unbelievable. And I talked a lot in that speech about how stepping into your power means allowing yourself to feel the full spectrum of human emotion. Yeah. And so I love that you just said that because the more that we tell ourselves, especially as women, and you know, for men too, I'm sure on different levels, but women have been suppressed for generations. Yes. It hasn't been safe to speak our truth. And even though it may be now, we've got hundreds of years of oppression mm -hmm. that we're kind of battling against, even just on like a subtle or, or subconscious level, you know, and there's generational healing that has to go with that too. Some things can be passed forward from ancestors and that's a whole nother topic though. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, allowing yourself to truly feel and say what you're feeling is going to help you start to ease into being more comfortable with the shadowy parts of you. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes, I completely agree. And Holly's saying, amen, sister. And Jane said, I'll have feelings freeing to know others do too. Yeah, yes. really. it was so powerful when I could have that safe space to share and be like, when they did this, this is how I reacted inside. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, it's okay. And this was Holly, I think, when we were talking about fears and stuff like that coming up and people um, knowing the things inside of us. And I know that, like, a big thing that I was super shameful for was, like, a bunch of my sexual experiences, like, never orgasming and having been molested when I was younger and feeling like I was super broken. Like, those were deep, shameful things that I just had locked up inside of me. And when I finally had the courage to tell my partner, I was like, we're going to pinky swear. If you ever tell anyone, I will literally kill you. Like, <laughs> I've never told anyone else since I was little. I'm like, 
And it was so freeing just to tell him. And then having that safe space, I could tell more and I can tell more and I can tell more and releasing all of those old stories of what that meant around me gave me so much more freedom and joy on the other side. So I love, love, love encouraging people to speak their truth. And I know I used to have like fuck tons of throat chakra blockages and like I keep doing that work and I like tend to attract a lot of women who need that because we've been suppressed and because we've been told to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or like, I mean, think about it way, way, way back when, when women spoke their mind, it actually was a threat to their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's the whole thing with the patriarchy and all that, but mm -hmm. it's just... <laughs> And I love, you said this a little bit earlier too, that just kind of came up for me again, that the more that you suppress those things, you can actually lead yourself to physical illness yeah. and disease down the line. And, mm -hmm. you know, stress especially is um, stress, whether it's from like circumstance or just stress from suppressing things for so long, takes mm -hmm. such a physical toll on the body. And mm -hmm. then we wonder why we're feeling like shit all the time. And mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, we're just perpetuating this, this system and this cycle. Um, and that's why allowing yourself, you know, first off to just acknowledge what it is that you're feeling. And I have a practice I love with this. It's called radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what it is, is it's starting to get more comfortable with acknowledging what emotions you're actually going through. And it's very, very simple. And it's just right now I feel blank. So angry, sad, grief, pissed off, frustrated, whatever. And you follow it up with, and that's okay. Yeah, because we have to start to normalize the fact that we're freaking human and mm -hmm. we're allowed to feel whatever yeah. it is that's coming up for us. And it's so much more than just even being allowed. You are required to feel these things, to have the full blown human experience, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Jane's sharing, it takes practice and support and a support system. Completely agree. Yes. And sometimes, quote, afterburn waiting for other shoe to fall happens when you speak up at first. Yeah. And sometimes it's totally fine. And everyone's like, okay, that's your truth. That's totally fine. And the worst case scenarios we had in our head weren't real. I know like 2018, I was just so in my head scared of like publicly sharing the sexual healing empowerment work that I was doing. I was like, yeah, the like private clients that I work with who like have known me for a long time that we kind of are drawn to doing that area together and these things show up fine. I'm like resisted so hard not doing it publicly. And that was during the year that I had my hormones be all like fucked up because I got off birth control and like hair was falling out and my energy was depleted. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm literally like sick and in disease going against what my like inner guidance is telling me to do. Like I was resisting sharing that truth publicly and it was causing that disease within me. So like on big and small levels, this can show up in your life and you can just get those baby steps of doing it with the safe people and like, you're like, okay. I'm like having my training wheels on and then more and more and more. And then you get that confidence and being like, I can share who I am. And it's so freeing to be like unconditionally loved by those people who are your like soul sister, your soul tribe, the soul fam people. It's like this deeper level that I had like no idea there like existed. I hear people talking about like true soul fam or ideal clients and people like that. And it's like having those people in my life has been such a blessing. And it's like, yeah, I don't care about anyone who isn't into me and my energy and my authenticness because they're not for my highest best good. So I know that that can be a huge like fear of people. It's like, well, what if these people who've gotten to know this mask don't love me? It's like, well, this is a mask. Do you really want to like try to be in disease holding this mask together for the rest of your life? Or do you want to be super authentic and true to your soul and what you came here to do and find those incredible human beings who are going to be in alignment and love you for that? Yeah. So it's so worth it. It so is. And it's like, you know, we all desire that it, on some level, that like soul sister connection, you know, yes. but we can't truly even allow ourselves to have it until we're able to let go of some of those stories and until we're able to allow ourselves to even just slowly get a little bit more comfortable with who we are at our core because your soul sisters are gonna know if if you're hiding something, if you're not being your true self, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm, definitely. <laughs> um, and there's so much like, you know, as women, we need to stop waiting for someone to give us permission to have the things that we wanna have. Yeah and to do the things that we want to do. And sometimes we don't even realize that we're doing it. It's just like, well, I want to do this, but X, Y, Z, W, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, giving yourself permission to, to feel, to mm -hmm. 
speak your truth, you know, without fear. And, mm. you know, to be honest, there may be some people who don't like your truth or who don't mm. resonate with your truth, but you know what, those aren't your people. Yes. And the more that you kind of step into this, the more comfortable that you'll become with the fact that like, okay, you know, and, and I think uh, we were just talking about the, you know, the mask. Mm -hmm. They knew me with the mask. Either they're going to stick around and get to know the real me and that's wonderful. And if they're not, then I'm going to let you go with love and forgiveness. And, mm -hmm. and I'm just making room for my soul people to come in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that little p period in between can sometimes be scary, but like it's worth it on the other side. I've had this transition at different points in my life and my healing yeah. journey. And it's like the most incredible people come in that space, but you need to make that space in the container. Cause think about it. Like if I had this filled with water right now, then there wouldn't be space for new things. But if I have space for it, new things can enter like energetically. It makes sense guys, but you have to make that space first and trust that this is going to be right for you in your path. Yes. How do you help people go into that deeper awareness so that they can get all this joy and happiness on the other side? Yes. So I love teaching and um, really helping people step into meditation as a practice Beautiful. because that quiet space that you have with yourself and and sometimes it doesn't even have to be quiet at first. So when I talk about yeah. meditation, especially maybe to people who aren't all that familiar with it, I want you to know that meditation doesn't have to look the way that it's like portrayed in when you Google meditation and everyone's <laughs> quietly on a beach in their yoga pants. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like that if it doesn't work for you. Cause a lot of times my clients will come to me and we'll try to start it and they're like, I can't sit still. I'm not comfortable with myself. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And so, you know, we start a different route. Maybe meditating for you starts with moving your body while you're doing it, going for a walk, you know, on a hike, um, I actually have a, a client recently that we talked about starting to meditate while folding the laundry, but mm -hmm. like keeping your body engaged with something so that you kind of learn to pay closer attention to what's going on in your mind. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes that connection between what your body's doing and your mind um, can help you kind of just get into that a little bit deeper until you're ready to sit with yourself. Cause I know it's not always comfortable to start to sit with yourself in silence if you've never done that before. And that's okay. So, you know, meditation is key to starting to just get to know yourself on a deeper level. Start to notice what thoughts come through my mind. What things am I playing on repeat? Where am I feeling uncomfortable by sitting with myself? If that's something that comes up for you. Um, and there's something called my favorite, like self-love, self-awareness practice is called mirror work. And I don't know if anyone's ever practiced this before, but it's, amazing yeah. a little bit jarring at first it can be and i'll just be <laughs> honest with you there and really what's required with mirror work is to put yourself in front of a mirror and truly look at yourself mm -hmm. and notice what things come up when you're truly allowing yourself just to see yourself not putting yeah. on makeup not drying your hair not getting dressed but just being with you mm -hmm. And, um, and there's actually, I have a whole written up document on Google, um, on Google, on mirror work that I can share afterwards too. That's kind of yes. got some steps and some journaling suggestions that I'd love to throw in the comments later on for Definitely. all of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, of course, absolutely. Cause I believe so strongly in this. And that is something that I always start with my clients on deeper self-awareness is with meditation and mirror work and just slowly working through all of the pieces that come up and, mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big, you mentioned it in the beginning too, about how I'm really big on doing this healing work and, but also still channeling joy while you're doing it because healing can be a little bit of a rocky road because we're, we're pulling up some deep crap here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I always maintain the focus of, you know, what channeling your joy, what is going to bring you joy? What can you mm -hmm. do right now that is going to spark joy, peace, calm, whatever it is that you want to be feeling within you mm -hmm. and going out and actually allowing yourself to do that thing, mm -hmm. even just once, once a day, every day. Um, you know, if it's eating a piece of chocolate cake today, or maybe tomorrow it's allowing yourself to take a nap. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like big spending or, or really earth shattering things, but mm -hmm. For so many women, we're just detached from what actually brings us joy because mm -hmm. we're so focused on what we feel like we have to do. Yeah. And um, you actually don't have to do anything. I'm mm -hmm. going to rock the boat a little bit when I say that because <laughs> we all have all of these pressures on us and, and so many things that come up that we feel like 
we're responsible for and we have to do. And do you have responsibilities? Because we're all adults, of course, but you get to choose where you want to spend your time. Yes. And so, you know, that's just a really important piece for me too, is even five minutes a day, making sure that you're doing something or engaging in something that lights you up and brings you peace, mm -hmm. even throughout everything else. Yes. And that was a huge thing in my journey because I was always in my masculine energy, like giving, 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 producing, 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 and put it, put it, put it, like 24 seven. And to like have the awareness that I could wake up in the morning and do nothing all day and still be worthy and deserving of love and perfect and pure. And like that we're a human being and that you're lovable without doing stuff for other people and that you can just take time for yourself and carve that out and then create a life where you have more and more and more of that was like, <laughs> Right. At the beginning and embodying it is now is just like the biggest blessing in my life because it's so freeing and it gives you so much more joy on a consistent basis and it like it nourishes your soul at a deeper level so like start with your baby steps and for me meditation was like Ooh, i'm not sure but like dancing gets me so into my body mm. and, and more connection and i get so much channeled stuff through that and i get more awareness and it's like it can look like so many different things to different people instead of just being like, oh, I have to like, like you said, yoga on the beach. Or like, if you're in traffic, like take a couple deep breaths. If you're waiting at a lineup somewhere, like shut your eyes and do an affirmation. Like there's so many other ways that you can bring awareness to yourself and your body and give yourself that gift instead of being like, I don't have time and have all those excuses that would prevent you from doing this kind of work. Exactly. Because you don't have to sit down and meditate for 60 minutes a day right when you're starting. In mm -hmm. fact, most people won't really feel they're able to do that. And that's OK. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I'm I always say, like, even like the monks that you see that spend their lives meditating, they couldn't sit down for five minutes when they first started either. Right. You know, like it's a practice. And I love that you mentioned dancing and, and mm. you know, getting into your body. That's actually a really powerful way for me too as well. Yeah. Um, and like mandatory dance parties in the morning are like a part yeah. of my life now. <laughs> And it does like we we spend so much time completely detached from our bodies. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're so up here focused on what's happening that we're not even really paying attention from the neck down. Yeah. And so if it's dancing that works for you or a really simple mindfulness practice that I teach, that's just you can be 30 seconds, but close your eyes and just pay attention to what can I feel right now? Mm -hmm. You know, the the ground underneath my feet, I can feel my shirt on my body mm -hmm. and then moving to your other senses. What can I smell? What can I taste? What can I see? Yes. It's just a very simple thing to kind of just get you into. Oh, that's right. I'm a human with a body and I'm feeling all of these things without consciously being aware of it all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's something just really simple to kind of help you drop in. Yeah. Especially if you're starting to try to want to meditate or, or really anything else throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And more wonderful ladies are joining us live. Hi, Tony. She's saying hello, beautiful ladies. And Laura joined us. Hello, Laura. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day and let's get into this beautiful guided visualization. So mm -hmm. I encourage you guys to give yourself this gift. I know that I sometimes listen to all my like podcasts and shows in the background while I'm doing other stuff, but give yourself this beautiful gift in just a couple minutes out of your day. And we're going to visualize stepping into your higher self right now. So take it away, Stephanie. Yes. So if you have or haven't connected with your higher self before, just super, super quick background. Your higher self is your most authentic you. Mm -hmm. It is you without all of the pressures and demands and limiting beliefs and things that have been piled on us as, you know, souls inside this human experience. It's your direct connection to your soul. Yes. And you have access to step into and embody your higher self at every moment of every day because she is you. Yes. So I always like to just start with that. So I invite you to take a moment, you know, if you're in a safe place and can, please don't if you're driving, <laughs> but close your eyes and take a few deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Allow yourself to practice a little bit of that mindfulness that I just mentioned and, and feel your body. What can you feel right now? You know, your, your bottom on the seat, your shirt on your body, headphones in your ears. And then I allow you or allow yourself to picture yourself in a safe space in nature. You know, where does that bring you joy? Are you in a forest? Are you on the beach? Are you in the mountains? 
picture yourself in a place that makes you smile. With the sun shining down on you, you can feel the wind stroking across your body. And slowly start to feel the presence sitting across from you that is your higher self. She is you. She is your truth. She is you without fear. She is the embodiment of all of your desires and your passions and your gifts. And she's radiant. Breathe and feel her sitting across from you. Notice what she's wearing. Notice is her hair down? Is she smiling? Start to pay attention to how she presents to you. Can you feel the power radiating off of her? That is your power. It is power that you have access to at all times because your power comes from stepping into and being your most authentic self. And as you start to connect with her, I invite you to hold up your hands and picture her meeting your hands sitting across from you and feel her energy, feel how she is you. Ask her what it is that you need to do to speak your truth today and pay attention to how, how you feel when you ask that. Is she, she saying anything? Is she smiling? Did you get any images in your head when you asked that? Whatever comes through, accept it without judgment because what comes through first is your intuition. What comes after the questions and the fear and the doubts, that's the ego. And right now we're just connecting to our intuition. Feel her sitting across from you and stand up together, still holding hands. Ask her to show you what you need to do to step into your true self today. And then envision yourself stepping into her so that you are her and she is you. Feel that power wash over you. Feel the feelings of knowing that you have access to all of the answers without needing to look outside of yourself. Put her on, you know, like a skin that you can wear in your everyday life. And this is something that you have access to all the time because she is you. Roll your shoulders as you're sitting, flex your fingers, start to feel what that feels like embodying this higher self, this woman that is you, this power that you have access to all the time and slowly come back to yourself. Take a few deep breaths and just feel your body. Stretch your toes, wiggle your fingers, and know that even as you come back to your body, you are still channeling her. You are still embodying her because she is you. And when you feel ready, can open your eyes, come back to your body, and start to notice just how you feel after doing that. Is there power? Is there questioning? Is there, you know, and anything, whatever it is that comes up. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you can do every single day. And it can just be 30 seconds. It can be something you do for a few more minutes. But also remember that those questions that we asked your higher self 
you can ask her those all the time because like I said, you have all the answers inside of you. Mm-hmm. And connecting with her on a daily basis is going to allow you to not only step into and embody that power, but gain guidance on on what may be next for you or what it is that you may need to know and work on. Mm-hmm. So. Beautiful. I love that. And if you guys feel called to share, I definitely encourage you guys to share below. That was definitely like really powerful for me. And I've connected with my higher self numerous times. And I like have the intention that sometimes I'm like, what would my highest self do? Like me in the fullest embodiment of my expression and love in the world who like knows that I can't fail, who knows that I'm doing this through pure love. What would she do? And I got like a beautiful confirmation. Like I was really hesitant to not share about my restriction on Facebook and was just like, yeah, whatever, like people get put in Facebook jail. But I'm like, it's really not okay that women who have to do so much work and so much search shock of clearing and so much stuff to feel safe, to be seen and doing their work, get another slap on the wrist from the current like social media system. So I've had ideas in the past of like creating my own social media platform and app and stuff. And the partner that I'm with right now is like web design stuff. So I've like asked about questions about it and I'm like, how possible are these things? And it's like, cool, that's going to be something that I help co-create or something that happens in my reality at some point. So that felt super powerful. I'm like, yes, amazing safe space for sacred women to get together. I'm like, that feels so freaking powerful. (laughs) God, that feels amazing. I love that. (laughs) And Tony's sharing. That felt amazing. I received answers as to stop second guessing anything I do. Beautiful. And she said, woohoo, loveless. Awesome. So yeah, if you guys feel called to share, even if you're on the replay, we definitely encourage you guys to do that. Oh, that felt really, really good. And how can people connect with you after the show to get more of this awesome energy in their life? So I am on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Just by my name. I know I'm tagged in this too. So please feel free to reach out anytime. Friend request me, send me a message. Um, Really, I love, I love connecting with people and making new friends all over. (laughs) Yes, I love that. And then Tony said, woohoo, I love that social media idea. Awesome. Sounds good. We'll put it into the energy and we'll draw it in. (laughs) Co-creating awesome things. (laughs) I love it. Thank you guys so much for joining the Love and Light Show. And I encourage you to continue to make it a habit in your life. And on Friday, we're going to do a special astrology reading. So if you guys want to get in on that, I encourage you guys to find the post that I posted a couple days ago about it. And you can put your location and date of birth and a special guest will be chosen to do a live reading on the show. So you guys have to put it in the comments in order for you guys to actually be um, in there. And Jane shared, liked and shared anything for me, please. Thank you. Awesome. Watching from the UK. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much for sharing. And yes, I can't share like I usually do after the show. I will after my like thing tomorrow, I guess, is now going to be a thing, not tonight. So I really encourage you guys to support us in sharing the beautiful messages of women stepping into their power by sharing this with your friends or family members. And I know that sometimes it's like, okay, I don't share, but you can also take the link and send it to someone in your life that you're like, oh my gosh, this would totally nurture and support her. And I love her and I want to share this love and light with them. So I encourage you guys to do that too. And I'm sending you guys all so much love and light. Thank you guys so much.